Good afternoon. These are the upper limb anatomy. I sense colorful notes. Brachial plexus, very simply. The ventral rami, not dorsal. Dorsal are sensory. Remember, S is dorsal are sensory, but vent ventral T motor. So the ventral rami of C5 to T1 will form the brachial plexus. We have roots, then trunks, then divisions, then cords, cords, then branches. Redder truck deliver course box. Okay, so C5, T1, ventral rami will form trunks. How? C5 and C6, ventral roots will unit to form the upper trunk. C7 will be alone to form the middle trunk. C8 and T1 will together form the lower trunk. Then these trunks will divide each one into anterior and posterior division, each one of them. All the posterior divisions of these trunks will form this posterior cord. And then the cords will give branches. But these upper trunk anterior division and middle trunk anterior division will form the lateral cord. And then the remaining one is the lower trunk anterior division will continue as the middle, uh, the medial cord. So we have lateral cord, medial cord, and from behind this posterior cord. So now we have to remember these colors. First, I will start by roots branches, and then one trunk branches, and then we will continue for the cords branches. The C5 root, this color, will give dorsal scapular nerve for rhomboids major and minor and levator scapulae muscles and then will contribute to phrenic nerve. Remember the phrenic nerve is C3 to C5, C3, C4, C5. So C5 is involved with us, okay? Then long thoracic nerve of Bell, this nerve, here we'll take from C5, C6, C7 roots. This nerve will give serratus anterior and preventing the scapula from winging posteriorly. Why? Because the serratus anterior attached to the medial border of the scapulae. Now, for the upper trunk, we'll give suprascapular nerve, supra for infra and supraspinatus muscles, and nerve to subclavius. These nerves will be given by the upper trunk. Then, at, then now we are for cords branches. Okay, lateral cord will give lateral root of median nerve, lateral pectoral nerve, and will continue as musculocutaneous nerve. Medial cord will give medial root of median nerve, medial pectoral nerve, medial cutaneous nerve of arm, medial cutaneous nerve of forearm, and then will continue as ulnar nerve.
Lastly, the posterior cord, the red one. Remember the word ulnars. Despite posterior cord will not give ulnar, but remember this ulnar word as a mnemonic. Upper and lower subscapular nerves, nerve to latissimus dorsi, axillary, and then the posterior cord will continue as radial nerve. Now for the main injuries of the brachial plexus. We have C5, C6 injury, herpes palsy, will give waiter step deformity. And we have C8, T1, lower brachial plexus injury, will give clumbic palsy. Don't forget, I made it by colors just as a photo memory for you. Clump is glowing, L for lower roots injury. Remember that the herbs palsy, C5 and C6 injury will results the following. Muscles, nerves, and sensory loss. We have first suprascapular nerve and nerve to subclavius, then we have paralysis of these muscles. Supra and infraspinatus muscles and subclavius muscle. Then the musculocutaneous nerve injury will give BBC, biceps brachii, brachialis partially because it also will be given by radial nerve and Coraco brachialis. Then, lastly, axillary nerve will give deltoid and teres minor. Because of these nerve injuries and muscle injuries, we have lastly cutaneous innervation of musculocutaneous loss of sensation down the lateral side of forearm. Why? Because musculocutaneous is continuing as the lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm. Also, axillary will give the badge area on the lateral side over the skin over deltoid muscle. So, the elbow will be extended forearm will be adducted medially rotated okay this is called waiter step deformity and these are the moods of herbs duchenne palsy but clumbic palsy c8 and t1 this is the moods of its injury and the resulting clawing. Why? Because we have combined ulnar and medial nerve injury with intrinsic muscles of the hand paralysis. All of these muscles because a combined ulnar and medial nerve injury. Also, we have loss of sensation along medial side of arm, forearm, hand, and medial two fingers. Why? Because these are the distribution of C8 and T1. See from here, this is C3, this is C4, and then this is C5, then C6, including the thumb, then C7, middle finger, and then C8, medial one and a half finger, then T1, then T2. T2, intercourse to brachial nerve, supplying the axilla. Okay, so C8 and T1, the injury in clumbic palsy. This is C8 and this is T1. So all of these muscles will be uh, 
all of this cutaneous innervation will be affected. Lastly, the cutaneous innervation of upper limb. C3, C4, then C5, then C6, including thumb, C7, middle finger, C8, medial one and a half to two fingers, then T1, then T2, the armpit, then we will continue T3 above nipple and nipple line is T4. Don't forget this. These are brachial plexus made in concise with supraclavicular branches and infraclavicular branches. Also, according to the colors, this dorsal scapular will give rhomboids major and minor and levator scapulae, long thoracic nerve of bell for serratus anterior, winging of the scapula if injured, then subclavian nerve or nerve to subclavius, also suprascapular nerve for supra and infraspinatus muscles. These are suprascapular branches. Infrascapular branches, we have lat lateral pectoral for pectoralis major and pectoralis minor. Musculocutaneous. This musculocutaneous for BBC, biceps brachii, brachialis, coracobrachialis. And will continue as lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm. Median nerve is formed by two, two roots, as you see in color. Medial root of median nerve and lateral root from of from uh, lateral cord and the medial from the medial cord. This nerve will be discussed in details. We have also the rest of nerves supplying important muscles, including the ulnar nerve from the medial cord. and will be discussed later. But these nerves, axillary and radial, ulnar and median, will be discussed in details. Thoracodorsal nerve, it is the same. It is nerve to latissimus dorsi. If you remember, nerve to latissimus dorsi from the posterior cord, the red one, the word ulnar posterior cord, upper and lower subscapular for subscapularis muscle, nerve to latissimus dorsi or thoracodorsal nerve, and axillary and radial nerves, the same colors as the photo. And this is a cutaneous innervation discussed before. Now, upper limb nerve lesions made very easy. Long thoracic nerve of bell of serratus anterior, due to stab wound or mastectomy or lymph node dissection, axillary lymph node dissection, then you have impairment of abduction of shoulder and the protraction of the scapulae. Okay, so when you push against the wall, this will cause winging of the scapulae. Why? Because the long thoracic nerve will give serratus anterior will be attached here to the medial border of the scapulae, prevent it from going backwards. So winging will result due to long thoracic nerve of bell injury. This long thoracic nerve, as we said from C3, uh, sorry, C5, C6, and C7. 
seven. Axillary nerve, axillary surgical, axillary surgical neck of the humeral fracture or anterior dislocation of the shoulder joint, then you have two things. Just a flat shoulder because of the deltoid muscle, paralysis and loss of sensation over the lateral side of the upper arm, which is a badge area. So the test done in a clinical aspect, you will abduct the shoulder and the doctor will pull down against your resistance. Then you couldn't resist, why? Because the deltoid, the main abductor of the shoulder is paralyzed. So axillary nerve will give badge area sensory and deltoid anterior minor motor. Radial nerve injury in mid-shaft humeral fracture, spiral groove fracture, crutch Saturday night palsy when the arm dragged over a chair in a Saturday holiday. So the radial nerve will give beast. What's beast? Brachialis partially extensors of the forearm, anconius, supinator, and triceps muscle. Then you will listen to all drop, elbow drop, rest drop, and finger drop due to radial nerve injury. Medial nerve at elbow and medial nerve at rest. We have injury of the medial nerve, medial nerve at elbow due to sobracondylar fracture of the humerus. Then you will have this ape hand deformity. Remember here that ulnar nerve will give flexor carpi, ulnaris, and medial half of flexor digitorum profundus okay so the median nerve will give all four arm muscles apart from flexor carpi alnaris and medial half of flexor digitorum profundus also it is sensory to lateral three and a half fingers and lateral three fourth or two thirds of the palm. So all of this will be lost in median nerve injury. Flexion of the wrist joint is weak, of course, because it is the main flexor of the wrist. Hand will deviate to ulnar side. Yes, due to unopposed action of flexor carpi ulnaris. And also, you will have flexion of these joints to these fingers will be impaired. Why? Because the other fingers will be compensated by flexor carpi ulnaris and medial half of flexor digitorum profundus, which are supplied by the ulnar nerve. Okay, and also as we said, sensory loss to three and a half fingers and two thirds of the palm. Median nerve at rest, he means that if you have pure motor sensory, pure motor loss, this is called anterior interosseous nerve, and this nerve will be discussed later, but here, he involves sensory and motor, like carpal tunnel syndrome or cut, wound, or splashing of the wrist. You will have sensory at the same, okay? But here, if this is a carpal tunnel syndrome, the palmar branch of median nerve will be above and will be spared because the balmar branch of median nerve will be above the carpal tunnel. And you 
will have okay sign will be discussed later. This ape hand deformity has flat thinner eminence and adducted thumb because the add ball is working. The adductor polishes longus also supplied by ulnar. So you will have this shape of the hand in median nerve injury. Loss of sensation of three and a half lateral three and a half fingers and two thirds of the palm adducted thumb flat thinner eminence. Ulnar nerve at elbow you will have partial claw hand like this. Why partial claw hand? Because you have hand will deviate to the radial size side because of flexor carpi radialis supplied by median nerve and you will have flexion of distal interphalangeal joints of ring and little fingers lost these fingers and also flexion at metacarpophalangeal joints and extension at proximal interphalangeal joints and distal phalangeal joints of the little and fingers. All of this is lost, why? Because you have medial half of flexor digitorum profundus lost because this is ulnar and you have also flexor carpi ulnaris lost. So this will be a claw hand or partial claw hand deformity. But this picture here is a typical of ulnar paradox. Why? Okay, for ulnar paradox, again, ulnar nerve at elbow will result in ulnar nerve injury at elbow will result in flexor digitorum profundus medial half to be paralyzed. Then the ring and little fingers will extended by unopposed extensor digitorum, extensor digitorum. So it is a more proximal at the elbow injury will result in less clawing. Why? Because already this injury happened before the flexor digitorum profundus to be supplied. Again, ulnar paradox. Ulnar nerve injury at elbow will result in this muscle will not take any nerve, the medial half of flexor digitorum profundus. Then the little and ring finger will be extended back by extensor digitorum. Why? It is paradox because it supposes that when you cut a nerve from its origin or close to your body, then you have severe form of injury. But this time, because of extensor digitorum, you have less clawing. So more proximal resulted in less claw hand. This is this is for ulnar nerve injury at the elbow. Okay, but when you have ulnar nerve injury at the wrist, then already the ulnar nerve supplied the flexor digitorum profundus. Then it will lead to flexion of these joints of the little and ring finger, 
leads to more clawing. So, ulnar nerve paradox, more proximal injury at the elbow resulted in less clawing because it injured before supplying the medial half of flexor digitorum profundus. But distal ulnar nerve injury at rest, already the flexor digitorum profundus medial half already has been supplied, then this shape will be resulted. More clawing. One MRC is a question, a 63 year old lady is undergoing an axillary sentinel lymph node biopsy as a part of her breast cancer treatment. Which of the following structure listed below is most likely to be encountered? The most common nerve to be encountered during this is intercostal nerve, intercostal brachial nerve, T2 the armpit, skin, dermatome nerve, this nerve, intercostal brachial nerve, T2. We have also made this colorful suprascapular nerve, C3 and C4, and this is the ulnar nerve from here. This is the median nerve, okay, this is the superficial radial nerve and it will be available for you to read inside the notes. Big muscles of the trunk that's controlling the upper limb. We have trapezius, this muscle. We have also lat dorsi, this muscle. We have also levator, scapulae, rhomboids major and minor, and deltoid muscle. It's made easy for you to understand the origin and insertion and innervation, but in brief, trabezius will take from spinal accessory nerve, latissimus dorsi, if you remember, nerve to latissimus dorsi from the posterior cord, which is the same as rhacodorsal nerve. We have also levator scapulae and rhomboids major and minor from C5 root mainly from dorsal scapular nerve. Deltoid, as you know, it is axillary nerve. Which of the following nerves supply the skin of the palmar aspect of the thumb? Very easy question because we know that the anatomical position of the like this, so the lateral three and half fingers will be supplied by the median nerve. Okay, so median nerve will take from C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. All of them, why? Because it's formed from medial and lateral roots from medial and lateral cords. This median nerve will be median in the middle of the forearm, then will go through the carpal tunnel, then after that will give recurrent branch of median nerve to the thinner muscles. Okay, and before entering, the carpal tunnel will give a superficial balmar branch, supply the lateral three and a half fingers. Uh, balm, not fingers, not digital nerves. Okay, so the, the balmar for the balm only. This is a median nerve, very simple. The muscles that will take from median nerve all flexors in the forearm, apart from medial half of flexor digitorum profundus and flexor carpi ulnaris. These will be by the 
ulnar nerve. So muscles of the median nerve, pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, flexor digitorum superficialis, lateral half of flexor digitorum profundus, pronator quadratus, and flexor polishes longus. But here also, you know that the lateral cord will continue as the musculocutaneous nerve. Musculocutaneous again will give BBC, biceps brachialis, and partially coracobrachialis then continue as the lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm. One question in MRCS, a 10 year old boy is admitted to the emergency department following a fall. On examination, there is deformity and the swelling of the forearm. The ability to flex fingers of the affected limb is impaired. So you have flexion, fingers, the impairment. However, there is no sensory impairment. This is a pure motor injury. Imaging confirms a, super, a, a displaced forearm fracture and which nerve? So this is a pure motor median. So what is this? This is called anterior interosseous nerve. After the cubital fossa, the median nerve will give anterior interosseous nerve. This supply deep muscles of the front of forearm apart from the ulnar half of flexor digitorum profundus and also, of course, flexor carpi ulnaris, and it will be accompanying the anterior interosseous uh, artery along the anterior interosseous membrane on the forearm. So this will innervate mainly two muscles, flexor polishes longus, pronator quadratus, and the radial half of flexor digitorum profundus. So this pneumo or mnemonics made for you, A-I-N, okay sign. So okay sign, when I request you to do this okay sign or okay, then you will be asked to flex this and flex this correctly. But if the lateral half of flexor digitorum profundus and the flexor polishes longus for the sum is lost by a pure median nerve or a pure motor median nerve, it is anterior interosseous nerve. Then you couldn't flex this or this one. So the resultant will be abnormal pinch sign like this. So this is anterior interosseous nerve, a very important nerve from median nerve. Another question for a main nerve, a 23 year, year old man is involved in a fight outside a nightclub and sustains a laceration to his right arm. On examination, lost extension of the fingers. So you remember beast, radial, radial beast is brachialis partially, extensors, extensors, extensors of the forearm or extensors of the rest, E anconius, A anconius, S supinator, T for triceps. So extensor of the finger lost. So this is a radial nerve injury. Again, radial nerve, is a continuation of the posterior cord. We'll take these muscles, triceps bra brachii, 
all heads, then all extensors, brachioradialis, brachialis partially, all extensors, any extensors, including ab abductor polishes longus. And also, this will be by the posterior pure interosseous nerve. Why? Again, the radial nerve will be dividing into motor, which is deep in the muscles. And it's known as deep radial or posterior interosseous purely motor nerve. And one superficial radial is sensory goes to the skin. But before this, you have to know these triangles. Two triangles and one quadrangle. So quadrangular space, this is the margins. Teres minor from above. Humerus, as you see here, laterally. Long head of triceps and crossed by teres major. Again, teres minor and major and humerus and the triceps long head. So this will be doing two triangles, triangular space and the triceps hiatus or medial and lateral triangular spaces and the quadrangular space. These triceps hiatus or triangular space for radial nerve and also profunda brachii vessels, the deep brachial artery. Also at this picture, you will see the axillary nerve because the main branches of the posterior cord, which the word ulnar, you remember again, upper and lower subscapular, nerve to latissimus dorsi, axillary and radial. Axillary is here because we said axillary surgical neck of humeral fracture. So this quadrangular space will contain the axillary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral artery. Okay, don't forget radial nerve when, say, anatomical neck of humeral fracture, lower triangular space, mid shaft humeral fracture, lateral epicondyle fracture, drop in elbow or wrist or fingers, and first will be space sensory loss. Axillary, we have mentioned about it, deltoid teres minor, one big muscle and one minor muscle, deltoid and teres minor, and also badge area sensory loss. I sense rotator cuff muscles. We have sits. This is a scapulae from lateral view, and we have subscapular fossa on it, the subscapularis. And we have scapular spine. Above it, we have supraspine natus, and below it, we have infraspinatus and we have teres minor, okay? So these sets are the rotator cuff muscles supporting the shoulder, the shallow shoulder joint while movement because of the shallow glenoid cavity that hug the humeral head inside in a shallow position. So these muscles act as a support for the weak capsule and shallow glenoid cavity. 
to remember the attachment of these muscles to the tubercle of the humerus, we have two mnemonics. First, this one. The subscapularis will go for lesser tubercle here. And set will sit on the greater tubercle. This is a greater tubercle of the humerus, and this is a lesser tubercle. Remember this mnemonic. Subscapularis will tell them humbly, please leave the lesser tubercle of the humerus to me, and you sit down, sit on the greater one. So it's very humble muscle. Remember that supra and infraspinatus muscles will take from suprascapular nerve. Teres minor, remember the deltoid and teres minor by axillary nerve. Subscapularis is a wide, big muscle here over the subscapular fossa, which is humble muscle and will take the lesser tubercle for it. Then it will take two nerves as a gift, upper and lower subscapular nerves. Teres major is not one of the rotator cuff muscles, but you can read. Arteries of the upper limb. We have subclavian artery, axillary artery, and the brachial artery. First, you have to know that the right axillary artery will come from the brachiocephalic trunk, but the left subclavian artery will come directly from the arch. Again, again, sorry. The right subclavian will come from brachiocephalic trunk from the arch, but left subclavian artery will be direct from the arch of aorta. Okay? So, subclavian artery, axillary and the brachial. How to know and how to divide. It is one artery, by the way, but it's divided by two margins, outer border of first strip and lower border of teres major muscle. Okay, outer border of first strip here and lower border of teres major. Then before here, you will find subclavian in the middle axillary and below teres major is the brachial artery. Subclavian like to be divided into three parts by scalene anterior muscle. By the way, scalene anterior attached to the first strip on the scalene tubercle. In front of it, there is a subclavian vein and posterior to it subclavian artery. Okay, so you have to know that subclavian artery medial first part of subclavian behind the scalene anterior the second part of subclavian and third part of subclavian just lateral to scalene anterior muscle okay so this is the subclavian artery branches of subclavian artery in one word vitamin C and D. Vitamin C and D are vertebral, then internal thoracic, then thyrocervical trunk, costocervical trunk, and the dorsal scapula. Vitamin C and D, vertebral, internal thoracic, thyrocervical, C and D, costocervical and D dorsal scapular. This is the subclavian artery branches. Axillary artery, again, at the outer border of first rib, this subclavian artery will be axillary artery. Axillary artery also, like subclavian, 
likes to be divided into three parts by Tiris Minor. First part, medial, then first, second part, posterior to pectoralis minor, and third part, below or lateral to pectoralis minor. Axillary artery is a clear one, likes to give, the first branch will give one branch, second branch will give two branches, and third will give three branches. Axillary artery branches. Again, first branch, first part of axillary artery will give axillary artery branches. We have the, the first part will give supreme or superior thoracic. Again, the first part will give only one branch of axillary artery. One branch is superior thoracic. Second part of axillary artery will give two branches. Acromiothoracic and lateral thoracic. So the first part is superior thoracic. Second part, two branches. Lateral thoracic, acromiothoracic. The last part will give subscapular and to circumflex anterior and posterior circumflex humeral arteries and the SS subscapular artery. This is the axillary artery in brief. First, superior one, superior thoracic. Second part, two parts, and both are S thoracic. Thoracoacromial and lateral thoracic. Third part will give two circumflex, anterior and posterior circumflex humeral, and this is subscapular arteries. Now to the brachial artery. This is lower border of teres major, as we mentioned before, the subclavian artery here at the outer border of first rib will be axillary artery. And below the, the lower border of teres major, the axillary will become the brachial artery. Simply, the brachial artery will give the profunda brachial, brachial artery, the deep brachial artery, which is the main branch will run with the axillary nerve in the radial spiral groove. And don't forget the lower triangular space for radial and profunda brachial. The brachial artery will end by giving radial and ulnar arteries after the cubital fossa. All these details are in these eye sense notes. Hand muscles in sample. Remember that there is a fight between the ulnar nerve and median nerve in the forearm and also in the hand. In the forearm, we mentioned it many times that the ulnar will give medial half of flexor gitorum profundus and flexor carpi ulnaris. But in the hand, all intrinsic muscles of the hand will take from ulnar nerve apart from lower muscles, lateral to lumbricals, opponents polishes, abductor polishes, brevis and flexor polishes brevis. So this is the hand muscles made easy. But all inter OCI, palmar and dorsal inter OCI will also be supplied by ulnar nerve. As we said again, all intrinsic muscles apart from LUF are supplied by ulnar nerve. And remember bad Dab. Palmar inter-OCI are ab 
abductors for the fingers and dorsal interosseal are abductors of the fingers. This is a palmar are adductors and dorsal are abductors, dab. Okay, and all of these muscles. Don't forget that the thinner muscles will take from recurrent laryngeal nerve after just passing through the carpal tunnel will give a recurrent branch for the thinner muscles. And the motor branch of the ulnar nerve is known as the deep branch of the ulnar nerve will give all muscles apart from LOF, lateral two lumbricals, opponents polishes, abductor polishes brevis and flexor polishes brevis. But add ball is supplied by ulnar nerve. This will be a very good sign. If the ulnar nerve is injured, then you couldn't do adduction of the thumb. Carpal tunnel syndrome. Okay. This carpal tunnel syndrome, we have a hook of hamate and this is the flexor retinaculum. All these is a mid tunnel here, okay, by tubercle of scaphoid and busy form. Okay, this is a flexor retinaculum, and this is a special canal for flexor carpi radialis. All this tunnel is made to the passage of flexor carpi radialis, flexor polishes longus, and tendons of flexor digitorum profundus and superficialis. And also the main one is the median nerve. Apart from these, there is the balmar branch of median nerve will be superficial with ulnar nerve and ulnar artery. So when I compress on the carpal tunnel, there will be many manifestations, inability to oppose the thumb and atrophy of thinner eminence. All of this will be in a carpal tunnel syndrome. And it will be an easy question asking about a hypothyroidism, diabetic female with for example, inability to move the thumb in abduction. So this is called simian hand, okay? And the thumb will be adducted. Why? Because the working adductor polishes supplied by the ulnar nerve. The hand grips, the bower grip, the hook grip, the precision handling grip, the precision grip, the fingertip bench, and loose grip, firm grip. All of these grips are important to know that these are combined between median and ulnar nerve. In your exam, you will be asked questions like, for example, the this one is mainly by median nerve. But this one is mainly by both of them. So if you involve the whole hand, then this is a combined median and ulnar nerves. This is the movement of the thumb. This is the abduction. 
this is the abduction this is the extension so this is the abduction but this is the extension this is the flexion and this is the opposition and back again called reposition anatomical snuff box when you extend your thumb you will find a triangular space for snuffing this is a funny mnemonic because some of the drug users bought heroin in the past on it so it is called anatomical snuff box this is formed by extensor polishes longus medially this one here okay and also laterally you will find extensor polishes brevis and abductor polishes longus so it is a brevis between two longi okay abductor polishes longus medially most medial then one brevis extensor polishes brevis and then you have this extensor polishes brevis this is the anatomical snuff box what is the importance of this snuff box the floor of the snuff box formed by scaphoid and the trapezium bone the scaphoid bone is supplied by branches from the radial artery from distally so it is subject to a vascular necrosis when fractured why because when you have a bone like this and this bone is supplied from distally then when it's fractured then it will result in a vascular necrosis also this snuff box is crossed by the radial artery like you see and also superficial radial artery the sensory one some eye sense various mnemonics we have here as you see the ulnar artery and ulnar nerve and here superficial radial nerve and radial artery the arteries are always afraid to be in the periphery so they hide internally okay so ulnar nerve is lateral okay or it is here the ulnar nerve here is ulnar to the ulnar artery and radial nerve is radial to the radial artery why because arteries will come from inside and nerves will be outside remember also that recurrent branch of the median nerve will arise after the median nerve passes through the the carpal tunnel and it will supply the thinner muscles so it goes through the carpal tunnel and also supply the thinner muscle remember remember also the word tan tendon artery nerve from medial to lateral in the cubital fossa there is tendon of biceps brachial artery then the re the median nerve remember the word tan tendon artery the nerve from medial to lateral remember another word which is lamb lateral anterior to medial the median nerve is first started lateral to the brachial artery then come medial uh, anterior to it then lateral as here the, the the median nerve is lateral because the median nerve to the artery will be come lateral then anterior 
then medial. Again, the median nerve will go from lateral to the brachial artery, then anterior, then medial. So the median nerve is the most medial structure in the cubital fossa. So here I will return back to confirm that this median nerve is the most medial one. So tan tendon from lateral to medial. Again, sorry. So tendon, then artery, then nerve tendon and lateral tendon then medial to the tendon you can feel the brachial pulse and the most medial structure now is the median nerve thank you very much tomorrow in the question posting it will be very easy now I will show you some questions of the question bank. A 10 year old boy, this is a supracondylar fracture with a pure motor lesion, inability to flex the thumb. Then this is called AIM of median nerve. Which of the following nerves supply skin of the palmar aspect of the thumb? As we said, lateral three and a half fingers supplied by median nerve. A 36 year old lady undergoing axillary sentinel lymph node biopsy of breast cancer. Which is the most common nerve? It is intercostal brachial nerve T2 supplied the skin of armpit or axilla. We have here the extensor tendons. We have always six extensor tendons because the extensor retinaculum, extensor retinaculum will be divided into six compartments. Which of the following muscles is not innervated? you have to read the, the question very careful, not innervated. So why inner, what, what is innervated by the median nerve? We have LUAF muscles, lateral to lumbricals, opponents polishes, abductor polishes brevis, and flexor polishes. Okay, so flexor polishes brevis with us, lateral to lumbricals from LUAF. Brunator teres, of course, one of the main muscles in the forearm, front of forearm, supplied by median. But add ball is by ulnar nerve. Now I will discuss you the frumen sign add bullishes supplied by ulnar nerve. How this could be? We have a 40 year old lady trips and falls through a glass door and sustains a severe laceration to her left arm with lost ability to adduct fingers. So we have palmar interosei, add bed, palmar interosei, so it is ulnar. Injury to which of the following? So it is ulnar nerve, D branch of ulnar specifically. But here, you have to understand that the ulnar nerve is the main branch of the medial cord of the brachial plexus from C7, C8, T1. 
C7 C8 T1 the ulnar nerve will continue medially until passing behind the medial epicondyle and giving flexor carpi ulnaris and medial half of flexor digitorum profundus and then will give all muscles of the hand apart from Lewaf muscles and this is the ulnar nerve cutaneous okay medial one and a half finger continuously okay so the adductor polishes this muscle is supplied by the ulnar so when the doctor this is the doctor give a paper to you to or injured patient to hold it like this as ad ball adduction then the patient couldn't do that and trying to compensate by flex, flexion because the median nerve is working so this is called frumen sign because of the paralysis of the adductor polishes for the ulnar nerve A 23-year-old man is involved in a fight outside a nightclub and sustain a laceration to right arm with lost extension of the finger. So the main beast is brachioradialis biceps partially, extensors, so you will have a drop, so it is a radial nerve. A anconius is supinator T triceps muscle. Okay, an injured axillary artery is ligated between the cervical trunk and the subclavian artery. Between the cervical trunk of the subclavian artery and subscapular artery. If you remember that the cervical trunk is the last branch of subclavian artery. Okay, and subscapular artery, if you remember, this is a, a branch of the third part of subclave of uh, axillary artery. So I will show you a picture that subsequent collateral circulation will open around anastomosis around the scapulae. See here, this is the axillary artery, third branch, and this is the subscapular artery. Subscapular artery will give a subscapular, a circumflex scapular. Again, third part of subclavian will give subscapular, and subscapular by its turn will give this circumflex scapular. There is anastomosis between this circumflex scapular and dorsal scapular you remember subclavian artery branches vitamin c and d is a correct vertebral internal thoracic thyrocervical costo cervical and dorsal scapular so between the last branch of subclavian artery and the last branch of axillary artery there is anastomosis around the scapulae. So if you blocked one proximal artery, there is a still anastomosis that will supply. So if you blocked here or blocked here, so the subclavian will come here and give the dorsal scapular and dorsal scapular will perfuse very good amount of blood to circumflex scapular, the last branch of subscapular, which is from axillary. Again, to make it easy because this quick question hasn't been answered before, okay?
no problem the axillary artery the last part the third part will give subscapular and subscapular will give circumflex circumflex will make anastomosis with the dorsal scapular dorsal scapular from subclavian so if i block distally here then the circumflex scapular still be perfused from dorsal scapular i will return back to the question now it's very nice and clear now if i return it back to the question and you read it again you will remember that the axillary last branch will be subscapular that will give circumflex scapular that will make anastomosis with dorsal scapular from subclavian. Thank you very much. Another question, a 43 year old typist presents with pain at the dorsal aspect of the upper part of forearm. Also weakness when extending the fingers. But triceps and supinator are functioning normally. However, there is weakness of most of extensor muscles. So it is a radial. But you know that after piercing the supinator muscle and giving it by the radial, it will give superficial sensory radial and will give deep radial, which is PIN, posterior interosseous nerve, like the median nerve do, and giving the anterior interosseous pur purely motor, the radial nerve also will give the posterior interosseous nerve purely motor nerve for the extensors. At the end of this lecture, thank you very much. I'm waiting for question posting with you. Again, we will pass together. We will be with us until the final pass. Thank you very much.